Hi everybody, in this video I'd like to tell you about conditional expectations. Examples are shown in the face-to-face -face sessions, but the theoretical background will be featured in this video. The theorem we are using to define conditional expectations is called Kolmogorov's theorem on conditional expectations. Kolmogorov's theorem on conditional expectations. And let me tell you first the theorem and then show you how it's actually used. So the theorem starts with the following setup. We have a probability space as usual. So a triple state space, sigma algebra and probability. This is a probability space. And then on this space we have a random variable. X is a random variable. RV stands for random variable. Okay? And we also need that this random variable has a finite mean. So the simplest way to write this is that the expectation of mod X is finite. So this is the expectation of mod x that is finite. Okay, <coughs> let g, script g, be a sigma algebra which is also a subset of f. So I'm gonna call this the sub sigma algebra algebra of script f. So remember that this term f is the sigma algebra in your probability space. And then G is a subset of that which itself is a sigma algebra. Okay, so G itself is a sigma algebra, is a subset of F. Okay, then the theorem says the following. So it's a statement before I can make the definition. So then the theorem says that there exists a random variable V with the following property. So it's a random variable on this probability space omega fp and it has the following properties, three properties. A is that V is G measurable. In other words, the inverse image of the Borel sigma algebra on R maps to the sigma algebra G. Okay? B is that the expectation of V is finite, V mod, so both the positive parts and the negative parts are finite, and C, that's the really important bit, and that's what we're going to use a lot. If you now look at the expectation of V on any set G, from script G, I'm gonna mark this in a second, that's going to be the same as the similar formula for X. So this is for any set G in the sigma algebra script G. Now I need to explain to you what this notation is. So this notation by definition is the expectation of the product of V and the indicator of G. If you want, it's the integral, it, in an analytical language, it would be the integral of the variable V on the set G only. Okay, so this is on the set G only, the indicator uh, multiplies the random variable V. Okay, that's uh, the first part of the theorem. There is a second part <coughs> which says that this G, this V, has kind of a, almost like a uniqueness property, moreover, if you have two of these functions v, v and v prime satisfy both, so, or each, or both satisfy the above conditions, a to c, then there is a measure one set on which they are equal. So if you want the probability that v equals v prime is one. There is a measure, a measure one set on which these functions have the same value. Okay, so in this sense, uh, 
uh, this V is unique. It's not exactly unique, but but almost like unique. Okay, V is called called a version of the conditional expectation of the conditional expectation I need a bit more space here of the conditional expectation E of X given script G. So what I'm defining here is really what is the conditional expectation of X given a sigma algebra G. And the definition says that it is going to be the unique in this sense, so almost unique, function that satisfies A, B, and C. Okay, so it's G measurable, it's a finite mean, and if you integrate it on G, that's the same as the integral of X on G, where X is your original random variable, for every g in the sigma algebra script g. Now I realize that this is quite uh, abstract at this point, and this is not the conditional expectation that you are used to from probability 1 or even probability 2. So I'm going to show you now how this thing is actually used, or at least give you some hints of how this thing is used. And the key to that usage is to look at particular sigma algebras connected to random variables. So on the probability space, let me change color here to explain this a little bit. So let omega fp be the probability space as before. So this is a probability space. And let y be yet another random variable. So it's not it's not x as I as, as featured in the theorem. It's let, let's take another one. Y is a random variable. Okay, then the sigma algebra generated by y. The sigma algebra generated by y. Notation is that sigma of y is what you would expect. It's the sigma algebra of um, y inverse on Borel sets. So y inverse on b's, where b is a, in the Borel sigma algebra of R. Remember, the Borel sigma algebra was that generated by intervals. So take any Borel sigma algebra, look at its uh, inverse image. That will give you some sets, and this model sigma algebra generated by that is the sigma algebra generated by y. Okay. Now, what kind of events are the are in this uh, in this set? So what is? So let me just emphasize here that this is sigma of y. What kind of sets are in sigma of y? Well, these are exactly sets when you ask a question about the values of the random variable y. So you want to ask yourself, what is the, what is the event that this random variable y is equal to 5? That will be contained in the sigma of y. What is the event that this random variable is smaller than 5? That again will be contained in the sigma algebra. So this sigma algebra will contain information about y. Anything y does will be contained in that sigma algebra. So it's essentially telling you about why it's 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 the all the information that you can ask about why that's what the sigma algebra generated by y is now when people talk about expectation of x given y this quantity which you might have seen before in earlier probability studies that is really the expectation of x given by the sigma algebra generated by y the sigma algebra generated by y is a sigma algebra, and that plays the role of script G, or the role of this script G. That is played by the sigma algebra generated by y. Okay, so in other words, if you want to reread this theorem with that in mind, so what is the conditional expectation 
what is the conditional expectation of x given y? In other words, what is the conditional expectation of x given the sigma algebra generated by y? Well, it's going to be a function that is sigma y measurable, so it only depends on this sigma algebra. It only depends on what y does. If you know exactly what y does, then that will be an event in the sigma algebra, and that's all that we is allowed to depend on. In other words, this quantity here you defined, the expectation of x given sigma of y, or if you want the expectation of x given y, can only depend on what y does. In other words, it is going to be a function of y. And this is what you might remember from probability 1, that this thing is going to be a function of y. And that's what that's what this first quantity or first property kind of encodes. V is G measurable in that setup when G is a sigma algebra generated by another random variable. Essentially, it tells you that expectation of X given Y is a function of Y. Okay, it will have a finite mean, so you will be able to take expectation of the expectation of X given Y. That's property B. And property C is essentially some kind of a tower rule-like quantity. So it tells you that the average of the conditional expectation on any set that belongs to the sigma algebra is the same as the, the average of your original random variable x on that same set. Okay, or if you want the integral of the conditional expectation on uh, sets belonging to the sigma algebra of y are the same as the integrals of the original random variable x on the same set G. Okay, so that's what uh, that's what these three properties say. Again, the face-to-face -face session or, or the live session will contain uh, examples of how to calculate this and how to use this. And uh, if you look carefully what uh, what happens here, then you will realize that this is exactly the same stuff, the same quantity as was defined in probability one before.